nataka kuongea juu ya the power of deep repentance the power of deep repentance nataka kusema ya kwamba there is power when repentance is done on a very very serious note when people take repentance seriously it can bring a turn around in their lives in their situations even in a nation wakati taifa linachukua wakati wa kutubu na kumrudia Mungu hili ni jambo linaloweza kuleta mabadiliko makubwa hata katika maisha ya mtu hata watu katika jamii wakichukua na uzito kwenda mbele za Bwana na kutubu na kugeuka na kumwambia Bwana tuko tiali kutembelea makusudi yako kuna nguvu ambazo zinaachiliwa na urejesho katika makusudi ya Mungu. Kumbuka I know when we talk about contending it has a connotation that number one, we are fighting especially with the devil because of our, our prophetic destiny. But before even we fight we need to align ourselves with God because he is the one who ordained that plan that prophetic destiny he is the one who created you for a purpose wakati yesu alipokuja hapa duniani na akaanza kuongea juu ya ufalme wa mungu in matthew chapter 3 and verse 2 alianza kusema ya kwamba repent for the kingdom of god is at hand is near yani kumaanisha kwamba alikuwa nasema kama mtauona ufalme wa Mungu unaokuja and saying repent for the kingdom of heaven is is near so yesu alikuwa nasema ya kwamba the key to the kingdom is repentance In fact if you can uh, get amplified version of Matthew 3 and verse 2 um, yeah the bible says uh, and saying repent thinking differently change your mind uh, regretting your sins and changing your conduct for the kingdom of heaven is at hand praise the name of the living god the, the amplified version is trying to give us the interpretation of that word repent it means that start thinking differently change your mind regret your sins and change your conduct praise the name of the living god that is what it means to repent kwa hivyo kwa ufupi yesu alikuwa anasema kwamba this is a time to think differently and start pursuing God's purpose for your life. Lazima muanze kufikiria tofauti na muanze kufuata makusudi ya Mungu kwa ajili ya maisha yenu. If you read the same portion of scripture in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17, Yesu anarudia maneno hayo Matthew 4:17. Anasema from that time Jesus began to preach crying out repent. That means change your mind for better. Hatre amend your ways with abhorrence of your sins for the kingdom of heaven is at hand praise the name of the living god you know i'm trying to connect um, this uh, with the with our lord's prayer when jesus taught the lord's prayer in the book of uh, matthew chapter 6 uh, and verse 9 uh, he said um, when he was teaching his disciples uh, this is then how you should pray our father in heaven hallowed be your name then the bible says uh, let your kingdom come and when your kingdom come what will happen your will uh, will be done on earth uh, as it is in heaven so when the kingdom of god comes uh, god's will is done here on earth uh, as it is in heaven and the key for the kingdom of god to come is repentance praise the name of the living god are you able to connect that that the key for the kingdom of god to come uh, is repentance and then once the kingdom of god comes uh, the will of god will be done here on earth 
the will of God will be done in your life. And when the will of God is being done in your life, uh, it means uh, divine uh, restoration uh, of your prophetic destiny. Praise the name of the living God. There is no way we can be able to pursue, to contend for our prophetic destiny, even as a nation, unless we lay a very strong foundation uh, of deeper uh, repentance. Because once there is repentance, uh, the kingdom of God will come. And once the kingdom of God comes, the will of God will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. It is as simple as that. We don't have to complicate anything. Uh, that once we uh, uh, repent uh, and offer deep repentance, uh, genuine repentance to God, uh, then the kingdom of God will come. Uh, and once the kingdom of God comes, uh, then the will of God will be done. Praise the name of the living God. Jesus said, uh, if you see me casting demons... By the finger of God, that is the power of the Holy Spirit, then the kingdom of God uh, has come. Praise the name of the living God. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit uh, is a manifestation uh, of the kingdom of God. And that is why we see in the book of uh, Acts, uh, chapter 13 and verse 2, that when the disciples, uh, they, are, they were worshipping the Lord, uh, and fasting, uh, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, Acts 13 and verse 2, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work uh, to which uh, I have called them to do. You see, once the kingdom of God comes, then there is an alignment. Praise the name of the living God. Already Paul uh, has already gone in a first missionary journey. I think... Um, even the second. But here now when they are surrendering to God and the Holy Spirit came and he said, let this man be set apart for the work to which I have called them to do. Bwana sefwe sana. Kwa hivu wapendu wakuna nguvu katika kutubu especially wakati repentance haifanyu itu in a religious way. Wakati repentance inafanywa kwa kumaanisha na kwa undani Mungu huwa anakubalia ufalme wake ushuke na ufalme wa Mungu ukishuka inamaanisha makusudi ya Mungu yatatimia. And that is why if you can look at uh, the book of Daniel wakati Daniel alikuwa anataka kuomba because of the prophetic destiny of the children of Israel na alielewa ya kwamba uh, imebaki imebaki miaka kama miwili ile miaka sabini ilikuwa imetabiriwa iishe ukiangalia in daniel chapter uh, 9 from verse 2 utaona ya kwamba daniel anaingia katika repentance in the first year of his reign daniel understood from the scriptures according to the word of the lord given to jeremiah the prophet that the desolation of jerusalem would last for 70 years and then what did he do the bible says so i turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and petition, in fasting and in sacroth and ashes. Then verse 4, the Bible says, uh, I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed. He made a confession and he said, O Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with all who love him and obey his commands. Uh, who we have sinned and done wrong. We have been wicked and have rebelled. We have turned away from your commands and laws. And then he said, we have not risen to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings and princes and our fathers and all the people of the land. Uh, Lord, you are righteous. But this day we are covered with shame. The men of Judah and the people of Jerusalem and all Israel, both near and far, and in all the countries where you have scattered us because of our unfaithfulness to you. O oh Lord, we and our kings, our princes and our fathers, we are covered with shame because we have sinned against you. Then the, the, the Lord our God is merciful. And forgiving, even though we have rebelled against him. We have not kept, we have not obeyed 
the Lord our God, or kept the laws he gave us through his servants, uh, through his servants, the prophets. And then all Israel has transgressed your law and turned away, refusing to obey you. Therefore, the curse is sworn. Judgments written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out on us because we have sinned against you. Angalia many, the many scriptures Daniel ametumia, ili aweze kutoa toba kwa mungu kwa sababi ya viongozi wa fame na wana wa Israeli. Msari wa kuminambiri unasema, you have fulfilled the word spoken and against us and against our rulers by bringing upon us a great disaster under the whole heaven. Nothing has ever been done like what has been done to Jerusalem. Just as this is in the return of the Rome, says Moses, all this disaster has come upon us. Yet, we have not sought the favor of the Lord our God by turning from our sins and giving attention to your truth. Bwana sifuwe sana. Tunawana ya kwamba Daniel here is praying for the prophetic destiny of Israel. Anajua ya kwamba kuna ahadi mungu walikuwa mepatiana. Hii ni ahadi ya ulejesho baada ya miaka sabini. Lakini Daniel ya lijua ya kwamba kama mungu atalejesha lazima tuanze na kutambua ya kwamba sisi ndiyo tulimuondokea. Sisi ndiyo tulimuacha. Si ye mungu ni muaminifu katika njia zake zote. Kwa hivyo kama kusudi lake alijatimia katika maisha yangu sio kwa sababu Mungu sio mwaminifu lakini mimi ndiye sijaweza kusimama sawa sawa na mapenzi yake kama ahadi zake hazijatimia katika taifa letu lazima tuelewe ya kwamba Mungu ni mwaminifu ni sisi wenyewe ambao tunapaswa kuangalia na tuone ya kwamba tunafuata njia zake Bwana na pia tunatilia maanani ya kwamba Mungu kila wakati yeye anapendezwa na moyo uliopondeka na roho yenye kutubu hiyo ndiyo dhabihu katika kitabu cha Zaburi amesema ya kwamba hata idharao jina la Bwana lipewe sifa so anyone who desires to pursue his prophetic destiny lazima awe ni mtu aliye na moyo wa kutubu I remember one time God spoke to me na akaniambia uh, vile ambavyo atakavyo nitumia na vile ambavyo angetaka maisha yangu yawe lakini akaniambia niwe na moyo wa kutubu mtu yeyote ambaye atatimiza makusudi ya Mungu katika maisha haya ni mtu ambaye moyo wake ni moyo ambao ni wakutubu because mara nyingi sisi ndiye ambaye tunaondoka katika njia za Bwana katika mapenzi yake Bwana sisi ndiyo tunakosa kujawa na mapenzi ya Bwana katika hekima yote ya lohoni na ufunuo Praise the name of the living God many times we just we need to repent not just because of the sins of, of commission but because of the sins of omission what are the sins of omission? Sins of omission are the sins that I have committed uh, by not doing uh, what I was supposed to do. Huh? He ndiyo Samuel alisema, mimi sitafanya dhambi kwa kukosa kuwaombea ninyi. Sijui kama unajua wakati unakaa na utimizi kusudi la Mungu juu ya maisha yako, unaweza kukuta ya kwamba kuna watu wanaumia kwa sababu yako. Hmm? Kuna watu wanateseka mahali kwa sababu yako. Kwa sababu kusimama kwako kulikuwa kulete msaada. Kusimama kwako kulikuwa kulete wokovu sio tu katika maisha yako. Wewe unabeba msaada, wewe unabeba majibu, vipawa Mungu amekupatia, neema Mungu ameweka juu ya maisha yako sio tu kwa sababu yako. The Bible says in the book of 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 10, ya kwamba Tunahudumu. The Bible says each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others faithfully administering God's grace in its various form. Imagine that you are supposed to, to use whatever gift you have received to serve others. That means when you are not fulfilling your prophetic destiny, you are not using your gift then to be able to serve others. 
You are not faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms because the grace of God is multifaceted. The grace of God is in various forms. Imagine, that is a sin of omission. It is something you are required to do. But by not doing it, you are failing God. And because many a times you are not up to that standard of discharging our prophetic mandate, that is why we need to walk in repentance as we seek God and allow God to help us that we may come to a place where we can be able to align completely with God's purpose for our lives and we can be able to fully discharge our mandate to the utmost. Praise the name of the living God. Lakini kambra tujafikia pale. Utakuta ya kwamba kuna mtu amekufa akiwa mwenye dhambi kwa sababu uko hapa na mtu huyo ungemhubiria. Kwa nini ameenda kuzimu? Bwana asifiwe sana. Kuna kazi ya Mungu ikifanyika kwa wepesi kama ungerise kuwa the financial you are supposed to be. Lakini angalia vile umesota. Hauwezi kujitolea. Kuna makusudi ya Bwana yanachelewa kwa sababu wewe haujaweza kusimama katika nafasi yako. Imagine kuna maombi ilikuwa wewe umeomba. Hayo maombi yangekuwa msaada hata kwa taifa hili. Na mambo mengine taifa hili linapitia ni kwa sababu ya usingizi wetu kama kanisa. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Tuliomba sana kabla ya uchaguzi. Lakini baada ya uchaguzi, praise the name of the living God. Tunawachilia mambo, tunafikiria taifa litaingia kwa hatima bila maombi yetu. Ndio tunaweza kuraumu, tukasema ni viongozi. Lakini kumbuka unaponyosha kidole kimoja ama viwili, vitatu vinasema you might also be a victim. Praise the name of the living God. Hata wewe unaweza kuwa umecontributor katika ile hali ambayo inaendelea kwa sababu kama ungesimama katika pengo na uombe, Biblia inasema moyo wa mfalme ni kama mto ambaye anaweza kuwelekeza. How much as we continue to fight corruption? Because some of these things are, they need to be fought in the spirit. I remember I don't know how many years about 80 years ago, wengine wanajua pale kanisani kwetu, we put even a banner Na nikasema Mungu amenifunulia three monsters that we must fight in this nation and one of the monster was the monster of corruption the monster of tribalism and the monster of idolatry lazima zianguke katika taifa hili ndio Kenya iingie katika makusudi yake praise the name of the living god wapendwa wakati mwingi hata sisi tunashindwa kufanya yale Mungu ametuita kufanya na tunakuwa pia tumefanya dhambi inaitwa the sin of omission that which god required me to do and i have not been able to do it to the utmost maybe i have done it to to, to some uh, i've been able to discharge my call i've been able to serve with my gift uh, to some level praise the name of the living god and that is why the testimony of god is greater than the testimony of men many times we want to hear what men are saying concerning us and men may be patting you at your back. Na wanakuambia umefanya vizuri. Wanaweza kuambia unaendelea vizuri. Lakini ukimsikiza Mungu, Mungu anaweza kukuambia, yeah, I know the hate from which you are fallen from. Kama vile ambavyo aliambia kanisa katika kitabu cha ufunuo ya kwamba kuna mambo mengi ambayo ninaangalia. Naona bidii, naona kujitolea. Lakini naona umeanguka kile kiwango cha kwanza cha upendo cha passion cha zeal uliyokuwa nayo jina bwana ipewe sifa so kuna wakati mwingine tunaonekana tu tunaendelea vizuri lakini ni vizuri kujiuliza katika kuendelea kwangu ninaendelea na kipimo cha Mungu ama ninaendelea na kipimo cha wanadamu kwa sababu kipimo cha wanadamu kinaweza kusema we uko sawa lakini kipimo cha Mungu kinaweza kusema ya kwamba bado haujafikia. Jina la Bwana lipewe sifa. I wanted us to have some time to take uh, deep repentance before the Lord uh, na kumwambia Bwana tusamehe sisi, tusamehe viongozi wetu, tusamehe jamii zetu kule wa viongozi wetu wamekuwa wafisadi, wameishi maisha ambayo hawajali watu wa kawaida, 
wao wanaishi maisha ya juu sana lakini hawajali yule mtu wako pale chini ambaye hata kula chakula ni ngumu ambaye hata kulipa kara watoto wako nyumbani tumwambie bwana akubali kutusamehe jina la bwana ni probe sifa wakati tunachelewa i remember there were a, 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 a people who were praying somewhere not in this country and when they were praying somewhere wakaambiwa muombe kwa sababu kuna mtu ambaye atatoka Kenya na atakuja kuleta uvuvio hapa bwana asifiwe sana imagine yakoba inaweza kuwa ni wewe unayenisikiza na kuna watu wako mahali wanatafuta Mungu na Mungu anasema ni wewe ambaye unayengojewa utaenda pale na utapeleka uvuvio usipofanya hivyo watu wale wanaweza ishi bila kuona ukuu wa Mungu wengine watakufa na magonjwa wengine watakufa bila kukombolewa ama kuona wakovu wa Bwana katika jamii zao ni kwa sababu kuna mtu ambaye alikuwa ainuke na akaweze kutimiza kusudi la Bwana ni vizuri kujiombea because when i am feeling my prophetic destiny i'm not just feeling myself i'm feeling other people who are intertwined with my prophetic destiny even nations Praise the name of the living God. Mahali taifa hili lilikuwa lipeleke injili. Tumeambiwa miaka mingi ya kwamba Kenya is a springboard of revival. How long shall we take to be able to rise and fulfill our prophetic mandate? Tutachukua muda gani? Tutanenewa miaka mingapi? Itachukua uchungu wa aina gani ili tukaweze kukubali ya kwamba tunaweza kumtafuta Mungu hata kwa bidii zaidi na ili Mungu akaweze kuonekana it is my humble prayer that we don't have to see the nation suffering that we don't have to see the nation in more pain for us to respond to our prophetic mandate we can go on our knees and tell god forgive me lord in the mighty name of jesus it is me who have failed you it is my family that has failed you we have not des de desired to fulfill and to seek your purpose for our lives it is our nation it is our leaders we bring repentance on their behalf oh god uh, that there will be a change of heart uh, in this nation uh, from the top to the bottom uh, in the mighty name of jesus uh, we need to seek uh, god uh, through the power of deeper repentance and this is a great key even in your personal life wakati unaenda bere za bwana you know repentance inaondoa mpaka the legal grounds Mahali shetani alikuwa anapata mlango wa kukugonga wa kugonga taifa when there is deep repentance basi ile mirango inafungika zile nafasi the accuser alikuwa anatumia when there is confession then the accusation of the enemy they are silence mambo yale ya dui alikuwa anatumia mirango ambayo ilikuwa imefunguka katika maisha yako when there is deep repentance Shetani anakosa huo mlango. Jina la Bwana ipewe sifa. Si kijito cha damu ya Kristo Yesu kikaoshe maisha yetu, kikaoshe jamii zetu, kikaoshe taifa hili. Bwana asifuwe sana. Mashukizo yale yote Bwana ameyaona katika taifa hili. Bwana akaweze kutusamehe na yasipatie ibilisi nafasi ya kuleta ama kupata mlango wa kuleta uharibifu katika jina la Yesu Kristo adui asipate nafasi yeyote katika mambo haya maadui wa Kenya wasipate nafasi yeyote maadui wa mapepo wasipate nafasi yeyote hili taifa ni letu na watoto wetu na vizazi vitakavyokuja it is god who determined the times and the places we are to be born kama niko hai siku ya leo niko hai katika mpango wa bwana niko hai katika makusudi ya bwana na nitasimama kuzalisha makusudi ya bwana kama danieli alisimama na akatubu na wana wa Israeli wakaanza kurudi kutoka inchi ya utumwa hata sisi tukianza kutubu mahali hapa kuna mateka watafunguliwa katika jina la Yesu Kristo tutaona makusudi ya Bwana yakianza kutimia katika maisha yetu Jesus said repent for the kingdom of God is at hand repentance ndio hufungulia ufalme wa Mungu hata wewe siku ile ulitubu ukasema Yesu ni bwana ulifungulia ufalme wa Mungu katika maisha yako 
na vile unavyoendelea kutubu ha? na ku offer deep repentance ndio unafungua milango mingine na ufalme wa Mungu unaanza kuingia katika kila eneo la maisha yako katika jamii katika muji katika taifa praise the name of the living god imagine some, sometimes how simple it looks uh, that you can just come before the lord uh, haijalishi umefanya dhambi kwa miaka mingapi lakini kwa hilo ombi moja tu la kuamini na kutubu Yesu anaingia ndani ya moyo wako na anaanza kufanya kazi ningetaka kusema ya kwamba repentance is not a one time event it is a process praise the name of the living god it is a kingdom principle ambayo huleta growth katika maisha ya mtu ambayo huleta progress katika maisha ya mtu the more you desire to advance in this kingdom the more you continue to ask for God's forgiveness and repentance you continue to offer deep repentance you continue to make confession in different areas of your life and the more that consecration takes place the more you allow God to come and take over even in a greater way kwa nini tuliona kama kutubu ni ya watu ambao ni wenye dhambi wakati wanapokuja kuokoka kwa nini tulitumia hiyo kifunguo Yesu tu akaingia katika maisha yetu? Kwa nini hatuwezi kutumia hicho kifunguo kumfungulia ingie na wa finances through repentance? Aingie katika vipawa vyetu through repentance. Aingie katika mwito wetu, aingie katika jamii zetu, aingie katika muji, aingie katika taifa through the same key. There is power in deep repentance. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Wakati mwingine tunatafuta mambo mengi tunapokuja katika ufalme, oh Bwana ni jaze na roho, oh Bwana nataka upako, oh Bwana nataka karama zako, lakini tunasahau ya kwamba repentance is the key ambayo unaweza kutumia hata kupata nguvu za Mungu katika maisha yako. Hata kufungulia makusudi ya Mungu katika maisha yako. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Na wacha nikwambie shetani hapendi repentance because the more you go into repentance the more you cross the doors that he could have used in your life in your family praise the name of the living god even in a nation the devil dare us to be ignorant of some of these principles na pengine tuendelee kukimbilia mambo makubwa na tuna ignore these basic principles uh, kama ya repentance uh, na tunafikiria kwamba tukikimbilia mambo makubwa ndio yatakavyofanyika na tunasahau ya kwamba Yesu mwenyewe alisema ya kwamba repent the kingdom of God is at hand if you desire to see the manifestation of the kingdom in your life this is a key repent this is a principle Praise the name of the living God. If you desire the will of God to be done in your life as it is in heaven, this is the principle, the principle of repentance. Praise the name of the living God. Unaweza kuta roho wa Mungu anakuelekeza kutubu kama vile anavyovyo mwelekeza Danieli. Na unakuta kwamba unatubu mambo ambayo hata we mwenyewe haungeweza kujipangia. Ha? Hata we mwenyewe pengine mengine ulia dunisha na ukaona kama ni kawaida katika maisha yako katika jamii hata katika taifa lakini wa Mungu atakuelekeza kwa sababu anajua kwamba katika ile hali ya kutubu basi una unatengenezea ufalme wa Mungu jia ukaweze kuingia katika kila eneo katika jina la Yesu we need God's God's forgiveness upon our lives praise the name of the living god we need to remove every accusation of the enemy we need to destroy every legality of the enemy in the mighty name of jesus uh, the only way we can allow the power of god to flow is when we allow the power of repentance uh, to sweep over our lives uh, in the mighty name of jesus uh, na ili tuone ya kwamba mungu anapata njia katika maisha yetu bila kuzuiliwa kwa njia yoyote pokea neema ya kutubu katika jina la Yesu Kristo pokea roho wa Mungu aweze kukuongoza katika toba katika jina la Yesu Kristo oh my god wengine tuna paswa kutubu juu ya kujiongoza tumejiongoza na katika kujiongoza we miss god's 
plan and purpose for our lives. Uh, tumejiongoza katika kufanya kazi. Tumejiongoza katika ndoa. Tumejiongoza katika huduma. Wengi wetu tulipo inuliwa. Wakati tulikuwa chini. Tulimutafuta mungu sana tuongoze. Lakini kuna kiwango mwanadamu anafika. Anafikiria haitaji mungu. Na hapo ndi unaitaji sana akuongoze. Kwa sababu napo fika viwango vya juu. Hata madui wako ni wengi. Hata mwanguko wako ni mkubwa. Hata adui ya nakutafuta kwa njia kubwa.